Hello everybody and welcome back to the Duelist Cypher channel. My name is Scott and you might have seen me on this channel before playing Math Mech or Dragon Link, but today I'm gonna go as in-depth as possible to all of the different combos and deck building ideas for my new favorite deck and the tier zero meta threat, Pure Snake Eyes. In this video, we're gonna cover all the different main deck, extra deck, and side deck options for building this deck, various combo lines you should know about whether you're planning to pick up this deck or you're going to be playing against it, and even a couple ways to make the deck a little bit more budget friendly. A little bit more budget friendly. It's, it's pretty expensive. Before we get too far into it, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more content like this. And without any further ado, let's get into how to build and play Pure Snake Eyes. The pure snake eye deck would of course be nothing without the snake eye card. So for your engine, you're going to be playing three snake eye ash. This is a one card combo. It does everything. It's a starter. It does way too much in fact, and you, you want to max out on this card because the amount of advantage that this card can generate on its own is absolutely insane. You're also going to play two at least snake eyes poplar. Now poplar is also a one card combo. It can do things on its own. However, it's most efficient when it's added off of Snake Eye Ash or a bonfire or something like that. It can be used as an extender. You'll play one each of Snake Eye Oak and Snake Eye Birch. Snake Eye Oak is not a combo starter. It does not combo on its own. However, it's very good follow-up and does allow access to some other combo lines if you search it uh, and summon it throughout the combo of your turn. Birch is also just a good extender. If you see it in your opening hand, it's not bad. It can help you play through some hand traps. And often you might end up searching it uh, off of Snake Eye Ash on your opponent's turn. Now you can play multiple Snake Eye Oak if you wanna help out the grind game of the deck. Oak again is not a one card combo starter, but having extra copies in your deck means that you're gonna be able to search it in later turns and generate more advantage as you get into a grind game. You may also wanna play three Snake Eyes Poplar instead of two because it is a one card combo on its own. It's not as powerful as Snake Eye Ash, but because you can combo with just a Poplar, if you want to add more starters to your deck, playing three Poplar might be a good idea. In the pure version of the deck, you do play two Snake Eyes Flamberge Dragon. This card does way too much. Uh, like most of the Snake Eye cards, it's absolutely insane how much advantage this card can generate for you. And in combination with the field spell that we'll talk about later, it allows you to combo playing through Nibiru. And uh, this is also part of your end board because it's effect to place a monster from the graveyard into the spell and trap zone and then summon that monster on your opponent's turn will give you access to IP Mascarena and Formula Synchron plays, uh, depending on which version of the deck you are playing. And there are three spells that you're going to search as part of your Snake Eye engine. Original Sinful Spoils is the probably the most famous one because it's the one that's used to bridge into the Fire King stuff if you're playing the Fire King variant. But even in pure, you're going to want to play it to access uh, an oak, an ash, it can start your combos, it can extend your combos, it does everything. The field spell, which has a similar effect to Flamebird's Dragon in that once you activate it, it places a card from your deck, graveyard, or hand into the spell and trap zone, which is usually going to be the second copy of Flamebird's Dragon. And on your opponent's turn, if they special summon, you get to special summon a monster from the spell and trap zone. It's a good idea to keep in mind that if you have Flamebird's Dragon and Divine Temple on your field during your opponent's turn, there are some reasons why you might want to wait until they normal summon and attempt to summon the monster in the spell and trap zone with the Divine Temple effect instead of using Flamberge effect to play around like talents or something. And it's also worth knowing in the mirror that if your opponent places a card in the spell and trap zone and then summons, you can still summon that monster to your side of the field. So it's incredibly useful uh, both as a disruption uh, and a combo extender and protection against nib. The card does way too much. Again, like most of these snake guy cards, they just do so much on their own for every single one of these. And the last card that you probably will be side decking, but you could main deck it, is the S Sinful Spoils Subversion. It is a good one for one trade. It pushes an opponent's monster into the back row. A searchable board breaker in the deck is not a bad idea. So you might want to side this going second or play it going first if you're taking a board breaker approach to the deck. And also for your main deck engine, you are usually going to see this deck being played with three copies of Bonfire. There 
are some ways that you don't need to play this card if you shift around some stuff in your extra deck that we'll talk about later. However, Bonfire is an incredibly powerful card in this deck because as a starter, it can search Snake Eye Ash, and also as an extender, it can search Poplar or it can search Snake Eye Birch if you need to keep your plays going after getting hand trapped. One thing to note about this deck, especially the pure version, the pure version is not that weak to Droll and Lockbird at all. Uh, it can play through Droll and Lockbird pretty easily. However, if the opponent's opening play is a single Bonfire, they are going to lose to Droll, because if this bonfire has to add Snake Eye Ash, then it's very likely that they will not be able to play after that Ash is summoned. Uh, if you stop Ash and they activate Bonfire, they're going to get Poplar and continue the combo as if you never stopped Snake Eye Ash, which is probably the most frustrating scenario that can happen to this deck when you hit the strongest starter and they keep going. Uh, but that is the reason why Bonfire is as expensive as it is right now. So if you do only open Snake Eye Ash in your opening hand, then what you're going to do is you're going to normal summon Snake Eye Ash and activate its effect. This is going to search Snake Eye's Poplar from deck to hand. Snake Eye's Poplar's effect will trigger to summon itself, and then it will activate on field to add a Snake Eye spell and trap, which is going to be the field spell, because at this point you don't actually need the original Sinful Spoils, and instead we're going to use the Divine Temple to play around Nibiru. So we're going to activate it and place a Snake Eyes Flamberge into the Spell and Trap Zone. This is how we're playing around Nibiru, because if at any point in our combo we get Nibiru'd, we're going to be able to summon the Snake Eyes Flamberge Dragon and keep going. Then we're going to link off Poplar into Link Karibo, and Poplar's effect will place itself in the Spell and Trap Zone. Now we can do Snake Eye Ash's effect and send it for uh, a Snake Eyes Oak. It's worth pointing out that if your opponent is doing this combo, or you are doing this combo, it is vulnerable to Ash Blossom right here. I mean, the hope is that they would have Ash Blossom Snake Eye Ash at the start of the combo, but if they didn't do it and they saved it for this moment, uh, you're, you're up a creek. Now, you're going to summon Snake Eye Oak, and then Oak's effect is going to trigger to summon Snake Eye Ash, and now we can do Snake Eye Oak's effect to summon the second copy of Snake Eye's Flamber's Dragon. Again, incredibly vulnerable to Ash Blossom right here if you don't have any extenders or something else in your hand. Just worth pointing out. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is link this off into IP Mascarena, and Flamberge's effect is going to trigger to summon back two level one fire monsters from the grave. This is why this card is so powerful. We'll link it off for Promethean Princess. Princess will now summon uh, Flamberge Dragon. We're going to use Flamberge Dragon's effect to place IP Mascarena into the Spell and Trap Zone. And the last thing we'll do is link off these two cards for Ambla Whale. Now, you might want to, if you play it, and you probably do, link off the Ambla Whale for a Zelantis, uh, but for the basic combo, we'll go ahead and leave it as it is. Now, on your opponent's turn, as soon as they normal summon or special summon, uh, or if you want to just do it on your own by triggering Snake Eyes Flamberge Dragon, uh, you'll summon the Masquerade from the Spell and Trap Zone, then you can use IP Mascarena to go ahead and link into SP Little Knight or Nightmare Unicorn or Appaloosa, really whatever you want to do. Flambridge effects will trigger, which will summon uh, usually Oak and Poplar. Oak is going to target Snake Eye Ash and add that to your hand, and Poplar is going to search the original Sinful Spoil Snake Eye. Uh, and then the last thing that you can do is you can target Ambla Whale. Uh, with Promethean Princess if your opponent special summons and go ahead and summon that. And if for whatever reason they are scared of SP Little Knight, you can tribute off uh, Poplar for Link Karibo and then Poplar can place itself back into the Spell and Trap Zone. That is a lot of advantage off of one card. Keep in mind that you still have four other cards in your hand if you do this combo and make it all the way through. Uh, and those could have been extenders to make this uh, line more impervious to hand traps. They're most likely going to be a bunch of defensive cards that you can also use on your opponent's turn. Uh, there's a lot that this deck can do with just one card. But that is not the only one card combo in this deck that you should know about. So as much as we would like, we are not going to be lucky enough to open Snake Eye Ash every single game. Uh, although against some Snake Eye opponents, it feels like they do always have it. Uh, sometimes you're just going to open Snake Eye's Poplar. And it's okay because we still have a combo that we can use this card to, uh, to build basically the same end board uh, as the last combo with just a little bit less follow-up. So we'll start by normal summoning Poplar. Poplar's effect will activate and we'll add the original Sinful Spoils. Now, this is different than the other combo because we do need to have a way to summon another Snake Eye monster, specifically one that can get us to Flamberge. 
then we'll link off Poplar into Link Rebo, use Poplar's effect to scale itself, and then we'll use the original Sinful Spoil Snake Eye to summon Snake Eye Oak. Uh, this could also be Ash, uh, and then Ash could add uh, um, Snake Eye Birch, and you can do the combo more or less the exact same way. Um, but for the sake of playing around Droll, I guess we'll uh, summon Oak instead. Now, Oak will then summon Poplar from the graveyard, and Oak will use itself, uh, its second effect to tribute itself and Link Rebo to summon Flamberge Dragon. Uh, again, this is the same vulnerability to Ash Blossom as the last time. If there's no other extenders uh, or defensive cards in the hand, then we'll link off into IP Mask Arena and do kind of more of the same combo that we just did. Summoning two level one fire monsters from Flamberge, summoning Princess, Princess, summoning Flamberge, Flamberge placing IP Mask Arena, and then these summoning off into Amble Whale. Now, if you do make this play, uh, it is a good idea uh, right here to link off Amble Whale for Zelantis because you want your first action in the draw phase to be to summon IP Mask Arena to help play around talents and just to make sure that as soon as your opponent does something in their main phase, you have a response to it with IP Mask Arena. So the other main deck engine that you're going to want to play in this deck is the Wanted engine, which is going to be three Wanted Seeker of Sinful Spoils. You'll probably also want to max out on three Diabell Star, the Black Witch, and then, of course, play the searchable or settable, rather, original Sinful Spoils Snake Eye. Now, I know this, this engine is expensive. Uh, there's no other way to say it. But the reason why this engine is so expensive and it's so good is because any one of these cards uh, function exactly the same. They all start your plays. So whether you open Wanted or Diabelsta, or even if you open the original Sinful Spoils, uh, you can get your combo going. And, you know, if for whatever reason you don't have any number of Wanteds uh, or any number of Black Witch, you can add in more original Sinful Spoils and, and maintain the consistency of the deck. There are even some deck lists out there that play all nine of these cards. But again, they're consistency options and, again, they're extenders. So there are more things that you can do with Diabell Star the Black Witch if you open it in conjunction with Snake Eye Ash. There are two other Diabell Star cards that you might want to know about, and those are Dramatic Snake Eye Chase and Sinful Spoils of Betrayal uh, Silvera. These cards are not amazing right now. I mean, if you open Witch and the Trap, you can pitch the trap off of Diabell Star, and now, because of the trap's graveyard effect, either your Witch or the original you set off of it will be protected uh, from any sort of interruption. They can't imperm your witch, and they can't ash the original snake eye because the trap protects uh, that sort of activation, uh, it negates that activation rather, uh, by banishing itself from the graveyard. But the issue I have with the trap card uh, and with this card itself is that the uh, the trap card requires that Diabell Star is on the field for it to achieve its imperm like effect, and most of the time, as you're comboing, you are not going to leave uh, Diabell Star, the Black Witch, on the field. Uh, however, Dramatic Snake Eye Chase does have some utility in the fact that oftentimes, if your uh, Snake Eye Ash gets Ash Blossomed, uh, you can place a Diabell Star into the Spell and Trap Zone and continue comboing that way. Uh, it does have some capabilities as an extender, and also if for whatever reason something gets stopped, uh, your field spell gets dealt with, or your flame bird is negated, having this in the graveyard does mean that during the end phase of your turn, uh, you will be able to summon whatever's in the spell and trap zone onto the field anyway. So there is some utility for this card uh, and the trap card, however, I think right now, uh, unless you are running low on card counts, uh, or you really want to try these cards out, I don't think they have the utility uh, or, or the really feasible options for the deck. However, some people might have more success than me with them, uh, and it's totally cool if you can uh, pull it off. All it is really is the trap is a little bit more protection and also another interruption if you can set it and leave a witch on your field, and the dramatic snake eye chase is a little bit of an extender. So they're, they're cards worth to know about, especially going into the next set. Currently, right now, this deck is often being played with a Jet Synchron in the main deck as a sort of synchro engine and something that you can search off of original 
Sinful Spoils. It is, after all, a level one fire monster. So if you do play Jet Synchron, you get access to a ton of Synchro plays and this entirely explosive two card combo if you ha manage to open uh, Snake Eye Ash and want it. So if you're playing Jet Synchron and you open Snake Eye Ash and an a, a way to access uh, Dia Bell Star, you can do this combo that uses Borlode Savage Dragon and Baron de Fleur to make a, a pretty linear and, and protected combo <laughs> through a lot of hand traps. And of course, if any of this gets interrupted, you can just go backwards into any of the combos that we already talked about. But this combo is that you again start by normal summoning Snake Eye Ash, which is going to add Snake Eye's Poplar, uh, and then Poplar will activate to summon itself, and you'll also go ahead and chain Wanted Seeker of Sinful Spoils if you already have it in your hand. If anybody's going to droll you, they're going to droll you on the activation of Snake Eyes Poplar, which is why you're going to hold this Wanted to chain it to that just in case. Poplar will summon itself, and Wanted will add Dia Bellstar, the Black Witch, and then Poplar will trigger and add our field spell. Go ahead and activate the field spell, and just like last time, we will place a Snake Eyes Flamberge Dragon to protect us from Nibiru in case uh, anything gets stopped along the way. Then we're going to link off our Snake Eyes Poplar for our Link Karibo. Poplar will place itself in the Spell and Trap Zone. And this is where the amazing synergy comes in between the Diabellstar engine and the Snake Eye cards, because we're going to summon Diabellstar by sending Poplar to the graveyard. Diabellstar will go ahead and set uh, the original Sinful Spoils. Now we're going to activate that and send Link Karibo to summon Jet Synchron. And at this point, Jet Synchron and Dia Bellstar can be used together to Synchro 8 for Borlode Savage Dragon. This forces out Nibiru. So if they do not Nibiru exactly right here, uh, they don't have it. And Borlode Savage is going to get one counter and one negate. Now, an important ruling that you need to be aware of is that if the equipped monster leaves the field, Borlode Savage Dragon keeps its counters and therefore keeps its negates, which is great because we really need something right now to uh, to use Snake Eye Ash's effect. And that's exactly what we're going to do by sending the Link Karibo and Snake Eye Ash to the graveyard to summon Snake Eye Oak. Oak will target uh, any of the level one fire monsters and summon it back. And now because again, you're safe from Nibiru, Oak can send itself and Flamberge Dragon to summon the other Flamberge Dragon from the graveyard. We can link these two off into Sunlight Wolf. Flamberge can activate to summon back specifically Jet Synchron and really any of the other level one fire monsters. Now uh, Sunlight Wolf will trigger and you can add back Oak. Then we're going to Synchro Summon into Formula Synchron. This is going to draw us a card, and then we can link off into Promethean Princess. Princess can summon back Flamberge Dragon. Uh, Flamberge Dragon can place Formula Synchron into the Spell and Trap Zone, and now we can activate Jet Synchron's effect, sending the Snake Eye Oak or whatever Snake Eye monster you added back off of, uh, of uh, Sunlight Wolf, and it can summon itself back, and that is how we're going to link off the Princess by banishing uh, Jet Synchron and sending Princess to the grave for Ambla Whale. Again, same thing as last time, you can also link off Ambla Whale for Zelantis to play around Super Poly if you want. And another thing to note is that you don't have to do this combo with Sunlight Wolf. We could have made Mascarena there instead uh, and still ended on a, a net zero in card advantage uh, by uh, discarding the card that we drew off of Formula Synchron or something else in our hand. But if you do play Sunlight Wolf, you get to do this combo for free, basically. Uh, you don't actually have to send uh, any additional cards to the grave off of Jet Synchron. You can just send whatever you added back off of Sunlight Wolf. On your opponent's turn, same deal. Whether it's by the Field Spell effect or Flamberge effect, you're going to summon Formula Synchron, and then you're going to use Formula Synchron's effect in order to summon Baron de Fleur. And then, you know, the madness continues with Flamberge summoning back Oak and summoning back uh, Snake Eye Ash. Oak can target the Jet Synchron and add that back to your hand. Snake Eye Ash can add some other level one fire monster you need to your deck. And again, you have three other cards in your hand. So you're sitting at five cards in your hand. You have two Omni Negates. You still have Princess Pop. Uh, if you Princess Pop uh, Ambla Whale, you might be able to get Sunlight Wolf back onto the field, um, although you don't really have enough room at this point. But this combo is absolutely insane. It's one of those combos where if you finish the combo and you actually manage to assemble this board, you probably already won, which is actually an argument to why some people don't play Jet Synchron at all, because if you get interrupted at any point in that combo, the fallback is to use one of the other Snake Eye combos that we've already gone through in this video. So you can save deck space and extra deck space by just not playing Jet Synchron 
card at all and assuming that you're going to get interrupted. However, the reward for playing this card and going uninterrupted is that you end on uh, what is effectively a, a, a probably near unbeatable board. I, I think it's very hard to lose if you manage to assemble the full snake eye combo. Again, you have three other cards in your hand and, and they might be hand traps or something else that can slow your opponent down. But this is the, the basic goal that you're trying to achieve uh, by playing Jet Synchron in the uh, snake eye deck. There are three main deck extenders that you might want to consider running. One for one is a starter on its own because you can pitch a hand trap or something that you might have in order to summon Snake Eye Ash from the deck and do any of the combos that we've already talked about. Uh, but you also can use it as an extender if you get stopped uh, using, you know, with Imperm or Effect Failure or something uh, on your starter. Monster Reborn is a really cool card in this format uh, because, again, you can play through some of the interruptions. If your Snake Eye Ash gets Impermed, uh, you can send it to the graveyard, make Link Karibo, and then summon it back with Monster Reborn and try to use its effect to keep comboing depending on what else is in your hand. So Monster Reborn can be uh, incredibly useful. It also is great at the end of a combo. Uh, you can, instead of going into Amble Whale, you can go into a Charmer or a Nightmare Phoenix or some other Link to Fire Monster uh, and use it to summon back IP Masquerana before you place it in the Spell and Trap Zone, and now you end on Appaloosa as well. So this is an incredibly useful and versatile card. It also functions going second because if you're in a snake eye mirror or a fire king snake eye you can use it to special summon their princess or special summon their garunix it's both a combo extender and a going second card uh, so i think monster reborn is is necessary in this deck and the last card that you might see some people play is magician souls the synergy with magician souls is that it can send diabelle star to the grave and that does allow you to do some unique and new combos If you open Snake Eye Ash and Magician Souls, you can normal summon Snake Eye Ash and add Poplar from your deck to your hand. Poplar will summon itself by its own effect and then activate to search the field spell. Activate the field spell, place Flame Burge. We've done all this before, but here's where it gets a little bit different. The next thing you're going to do is link off into IP Mascarena. Mascarena is going to go ahead and trigger and place Poplar into the spell and trap zone. And now we can use Magician Souls to summon itself by sending Diabelle Star the Dark Witch into the graveyard. So if they nib you at this point, uh, you do have Flame Burge Dragon, but you're not gonna be able to trigger Flame Burge Dragon uh, to summon anything back from the graveyard. However, you will still be able to place the Masquerina to get at least some sort of disruption on your opponent's turn. But if they don't nib you here, you are now able to go into uh, Selene. Selene will trigger and you have three uh, spells on the field. So it will get three counters, which will let it summon uh, Diabell Star, the Black Witch from the graveyard, which will trigger to set original Spinkle Spell of Snake Eye. Now you can link off into Appaloosa for uh, two negates, and you're protected from any Nibiru or hand traps from this point on. You'll be able to use original Sinful Spoils Snake Eye to send a Poplar and summon Oak. Oak will then summon Poplar back, and Oak can send itself and Flamberge to summon the other Flamberge from deck. Now Flamberge in the graveyard can trigger and summon Oak and Ash. And depending on whatever your extra deck is, you can do all sorts of different things here. But in the standard version, you're going to go ahead and summon Princess. Princess will summon back one of the level one guys, and then you'll be able to make your uh, Ambla Whale, and Flambridge will finally place IP Masquerina into the Spell and Trap Zone. So this combo uh, does work. It gets you with Magician Souls into an Appaloosa early, and it allows you to access the Diabell Star cards. It is a little bit more fragile, however, uh, than some of the other combos that we've gone through, but it does work, and it does uh, it helps you extend. Uh, more likely, you're going to use it to help you extend if you do get stopped, rather than going for this combo specifically if you open that card. There's no discounting the fact that right now Bonfire is quite an expensive card, but if you can't afford three Bonfire and that's the only piece of this deck that you're missing, uh, there is one uh, substitute for it that you can try, which is playing three copies of Parallel Exceed and Infernal Flame Banshee in your extra deck. To be 100% clear, this is not optimal, uh, but it can work if you don't have access to Bonfire and you still want to play the pure Snake Eye build. And here's how that combo could work if you decided to play it. The combo I'm about to show you uses Parallel Exceed uh, and Infernal Flame Banshee to still make an end board uh, 
that puts up some disruptions. Although I should point out that this build and this, this uh, combo is not going to be optimal, but I want to show it off basically as if this was substituting Bonfire, meaning that you have no other Snake Eye cards in your hand. And if uh, it were a Bonfire, you would use it to search a Snake Eye card, but because it's not Bonfire, we have to do something else a little bit more creative. If we have uh, a hand trap in our hand, uh, preferably one that's level one, although this combo works with any normal summonable hand trap, uh, if you play all Mirage and Instead of Link Rebo. But if you have a level one hand trap like Droll and Lockbird or Effect Failure, you're going to normal summon Droll and Lockbird. And then you're going to link it off for Link Karibo. This is going to trigger Parallel Exceed to summon to the zone underneath Link Karibo, and that will trigger to add Parallel Exceed from the deck. Now, Parallel Exceed, you'll overlay for Infernal Flame Banshee. If you don't know what this card does, you get to detach one to search a pyro monster from your deck to your hand, and that is going to be Snake Eyes Poplar. Poplar is going to, again, by its own effect, special summon itself because it was added from the deck, and activate its second effect to add the original Sinful Spoils Snake Eyes. So we're not doing too bad here, but there's more that we can do. If you play SP Little Knight, and you uh, probably should if you're playing this build, again, this is only a substitute for Bonfire. Uh, there's only uh, so so much you can do to make this deck budget. But let's say you don't have Bonfire and you do have SP Little Knight. The next thing that you're going to do is link these off for SP Little Knight. And SP Little Knight is going to target Infernal Flame Banshee in your graveyard to banish. And now because Infernal Flame Banshee was banished and you control a Pyro Monster, it will special summon itself from the deck. And now you have the materials that you need on board to link into Appaloosa, Foe of the Goddess. Uh, Poplar is going to trigger into the graveyard to special itself, or place itself rather, in the spell and trap zone. Then you can use the original Sinful Spoils Snake Eye to summon Oak from deck. Oak will trigger to summon Poplar, and then you can send both of these two cards with Oak's effect to summon Flamberge, and Flamberge can place SP Little Knight into the spell and trap zone. In this combo, we didn't get to go through Princess, uh, so we don't have that interruption, but on the opponent's turn, we're still going to get to special summon SP Little Knight, and if they do somehow deal with Flamberge Dragon, we will be able to at least summon back Poplar and Oak if this leaves the field. And if we play a second copy of original Sinful Spoils, Snake Eye, uh, we'll be able to search that and we'll be able to use it on our next turn, uh, hoping that we make it that long to get an Ash, uh, a Snake Eye Ash or some other Snake Eye monster that can help us continue our plays. But honestly, an SP and an Appaloosa with three negates on it is not too bad. It's not too bad for having to normal summon a hand trap. Uh, of course, it you know, maybe we would rather have bonfire, but there are options in case you can't get your hands on some bonfires. So now that we've gone through some combos, we should probably talk about what the rest of your extra deck is going to look like. This is about a stack of 35 cards, I think, that you could uh, feasibly argue to be in the extra deck. And the only ones I think are mandatory, actually, are going to be Promethean Princess, Ambla Whale, IP Mascarena, Link Kribo, and then of course some number of targets for IP Mascarena, whether that's SP Little Knight, Appaloosa, Nightmare Unicorn, Underworld Goddess, whatever you want to play. But honestly, these six cards, uh, if you know, maybe you'll play two of these or three of these, these six to eight cards are the only cards I actually think are mandatory in this extra deck. Everything else is flexible depending on how you want to build the deck. For example, you might want to play a second Promethean Princess if you feel like that's going to be important in the grind game. Uh, but really, this is all that you have to worry about uh, actually putting in your deck. Uh, the deck functions perfectly fine with, say, only these six cards. Everything else from this point on uh, is stuff that you'll want to consider as you're building the deck. Now, we already brought up the fact that if you're playing the Synchron package, uh, you're going to want to play at least Formula Synchron and Baron de Fleur. There is an argument that Borlode Savage Dragon is a little bit win more right now. Uh, that, again, like I was saying in the combo, if you get to the point where you summon Borlode Savage Dragon, you've probably already won the game. Uh, so therefore, you can maybe save on extra deck space and do the combo lines a little bit differently, playing around different hand traps, uh, knowing that if you had summoned Borlode Savage, you would have already won. So now you get to be a little bit more flexible uh, in different game states other than the most optimal one where you resolve uh, original sinful, summon Jet Synchron, and make this guy as uh, your first synchro summon. You might also consider playing Super Poly in this deck. 
these are the three super poly targets I, th I think are the best right now, or at least the ones that I've seen people playing. Uh, Mud Dragon is great for an end board that includes Flamberge and Ambla Whale. Uh, Garura is great if you set it on your first turn and interrupt a Snake Eye opponent on their first turn. Uh, as soon as they get to Snake Eye Ash and Poplar, you can uh, uh, super poly for Garura. And Earth Golem Magic Mister is also a great option for their end board if you wait for them to use the Flamberge effect to summon IP Mascarena. Uh, you can then usually Earth Golem uh, the Zelantis or Ambla Whale and the IP Mascarena uh, and still have an interruption. Although you might also want to consider the uh, Gear Freed card. Uh, and if your uh, locals has a lot of Manadium players, uh, maybe Draco Knight is still worth playing as a super poly target as well. These two cards are also probably mandatory, although I guess you don't need them. Uh, however, you really should play both of the Charmers, Hita and Dark. Uh, they are amazing extenders uh, and board breakers in the mirror. Um, in fact, a very optimal play right now is to uh, bait out Princess. If you can get to Hita, uh, they have to use their Princess effect to destroy the Hita, otherwise you are going to take Princess. Uh, so if they do that and they destroy Hida, you can add a level one fire monster and keep extending hopefully through their combo. So I do think Hida is probably mandatory and so is Dark, uh, but technically the only thing to do the first uh, turn combo uh, that I pointed out was uh, those six cards at the very beginning. You can play Sunlight Wolf and Heat Soul to have a combo where you can draw a whole bunch of cards. This is maybe something to consider if you're on a heavy hand trap build. And Sunlight Wolf is also a good card to potentially include in the Jet Synchron build to be able to do that combo without losing uh, a card and card advantage throughout. You'll probably also want to consider Selene. Uh, Selene's ability to bring back the Abel Star and then link off into Appaloosa uh, is a really great option so that you can instead use your IP Mascarena to make SP Little Knight instead of making Appaloosa. Um, and with that, you might consider using Access Code Talker. Um, Non-targeting destruction is still pretty good. Uh, however, there's a more efficient OTK package going around right now, which is of course this World Sea Dragon Zelantis and the uh, Salamangrate Raging Phoenix. So I've already mentioned a couple times that Zel uh, Zelantis can be in your end board. It can replace uh, the Ambla Whale uh, to help your board play around Super Poly a little bit. But this is also a uh, important tool to OTK because you reset the board, trigger Princess, uh, and if you summon Zelantis over Raging Phoenix, Raging Phoenix will trigger to summon itself. Uh, and Zelantis also has another really important effect that is coming up uh, more and more, which is that it can destroy cards in the battle phase up to the number of co-linked monsters on the field, which means that if you get it on the field with a princess, uh, you can, or even an SP Little Knight for that matter, by the way, you can pop cards on your turn or your opponent's battle phase. So Zelantis is an OTK tool, but it's also a defensive option because it will keep your opponent from attacking over important parts of your board in the battle phase. There are also the other uh, uh, Link 1s that are really important. Link Spider is great if you uh, don't want to play around Nib in that way, uh, and instead you want to play around Nib by having Link Spider in there. I will say I don't think Link Spider is that useful because any situation in which you would link off the token for Link Spider, you can probably also link off the token and another monster on the field uh, for Hita. So you don't necessarily need Link Spider specifically, but maybe if you're playing the Parallel Exceed build and you want to play around Nibiru by keeping Parallel Exceed in hand, you could make Link Spider. Anima is a great defensive option. Uh, it helps break boards. Some people are not playing it right now, but if you watched the uh, UUDS, uh, Jesse Cotton had this in his Fire King Snake Eye build and was able to use it with the Zelantis uh, uh, zone placement to uh, break boards. This is effectively, this is actually really good against uh, Kieran specifically because you can place the Kirin as a uh, equip spell in the spell and trap zone and not destroy it by battle, uh, which would trigger everything on the Fire King endboard. And then All Mirage, I think is, if you're gonna play the Parallel Exceed combo with Infernal Flame Banshee, you should probably have All Mirage in your extra deck so that you can use um, all of your hand traps to trigger Parallel Exceed. If your locals has a ton of dimension shifters, 
uh, running around, you might want to consider uh, the level, the rank one bird and Zeus as a good option in case you get shifted. Uh, most of the time they're going to wait and they're going to shifter you, uh, or even if they don't wait, they shifter you in the draw phase, you normal summon Ash, you special summon Poplar, you get original sinful spoils into your hand for next turn, you overlay for the bird, uh, you put it in defense, use its effect to protect itself, and hope that you survive so that you can Zeus them on their turn. Pit Knight Early is an interesting card. Uh, it does allow you to access a negate. Uh, with the Link Summon board if you can set it up, although I'm not sure it's as efficient in terms of card advantage and using all of the uh, level 1 bodies uh, as, as some of the other options in the extra deck, but it is there uh, if you want to make a negate. And we already talked about Infernal Flame Banshee. This is a, a budget option that you could consider, although Shinping was using it in, in his build as well, so maybe it's not necessarily exclusively for budget. There might be some advantages to playing it. But yeah, if you do want to use this card uh, with Parallel Exceed as an extender or a combo enabler, that is an option. Sky Crisis Typhon is not a great card right now. Um, it, it, especially if your locals is full of people playing the Fire King cards, uh, or you're going to a regional or a YCS. And the reason for that is the second that you summon this card, if you've not dealt with Princess, this card dies and you can't do anything else the rest of your turn. Your turn's over uh, and they have a Princess on board and they're going to win uh, on the crackback. However, uh, the one thing about this card that you might want to consider is uh, anytime that there's a, a tier zero format like this, there's going to be people who play rogue. Uh, and a lot of the popular rogue options are going to fold to this card. Uh, they are not going to be able to deal with it. Um, if you know, you can bait, it still works as it did before Phantom Nightmare, that if somebody makes a board that you just can't crack for whatever reason, uh, and their last interruption uh, is on the board, that you can end your turn by summoning Sky Crisis and getting rid of it. So Sky Crisis is, is maybe not the first card I would put in the extra deck, but if you feel like your locals has a lot of, I don't know, Dragoons uh, <laughs> running around, maybe you throw it in there just in case. Nightmare Phoenix, I probably should have brought up a lot earlier because I think this card is uh, it should be in your extra deck, uh, but it's a great option for a Link 2 Fire Monster that has some utility in breaking apart back row. Um, especially in a deck that otherwise can't really deal with back row, uh, Nightmare Phoenix is is probably your best option. And of course, everybody's favorite card right now, uh, Agave Dragon, which uh, is a time card. You play it to win in time, uh, you link off with Flamberg into this thing and you burn for 800. That is the only thing, uh, don't main deck that card, just put it in your side deck. But those are all the different extra deck options that you have. If you've been looking at a lot of the pure Snake Eye builds uh, that have been topping regionals and, and topping uh, the various YCSs and UDSs that have been going on, you'll notice that they're generally in one of two camps. They're either playing a whole bunch of hand traps that are trying to stop the opponent from playing and then combo on their turn, or they're playing a whole bunch of board breakers. So let's go through your options if you're gonna play one of these two builds of the deck. And we'll start with hand traps. So if you are playing a hand trap build, the best hand trap in the game right now is probably infinite and permanent. It's generic, it doesn't trigger triple tactics talents, and you can set it as an interruption for your opponent's turn. Uh, you can also save it for the start of your turn. It's not a bad six card, this card's amazing. Uh, Ash Blossom is another good generic hand trap that could probably be in your deck. There's some back and forth about whether you should play Ash Blossom because everybody can just Hita take it, but I think if you only have Ash Blossom, stopping an original Snake Eye effect in the Fire King build to keep them from getting to the Fire King cards is useful. And generally, the idea behind hand traps is not to stop your opponent from playing entirely but to slow them down and to limit the scope of their end board. So even if they can heat a take it and still get to Princess, you've still accomplished something by uh, by using Ash Blossom, generally to keep them off the Fire King cards. Hand trap you'd probably use earlier though is Effect Veiler. So Effect Veiler is another generic negation on, on Imperm. Of course, it can't be used under Shifter, which is sometimes a problem, and it does trigger Triple Tactics Talents, and it can be only used in the main phase, but it's just so generically good that if you're gonna play hand traps, you need to find a place for effect failure. Drollin Lockbird is another uh, supposedly great card this format, although as you start playing Pure Snake Eyes, and if you have been playing Pure Snake Eyes, uh, you'll realize <laughs> that uh, after they use Ash Effect and search Poplar, they don't need to go into the deck anymore and add any more cards to hand. So Drollin Lockbird is not amazing against Pure Snake Eye. It's better against the Fire King version than it is against Pure. 
And so I think if there's actually any hand trap uh, that you might consider not playing and siding instead or, or not playing at all, it would probably be Droll and Lockbird. However, the last hand trap that I think you absolutely should consider main decking is Nibiru the Primal Being. Nibiru paired with any one of these hand traps is almost always going to end the pure Snake Eye uh, or the Fire King Snake Eye's turn. The only deck I think it's really not great against right now is, of course, Fu on Dereze. Because uh, they can do everything in four summons. Voiceless Voice can also put up a negate before four summons. It kills Branded. Some Kashtira players will lose to Nibiru, especially if you're playing the uh, Heat Soul combo in, in Kashtira. So this card's just amazing, especially paired with any other hand traps. So ideally, you're going to open like an Effect Veiler in a Nibiru. Um, or even two. If you, if you open Droll and Lockbird in Nibiru, you also uh, can stop the uh, Snake Eye, the Pure Snake Eye combo. It's just Droll and Lockbird doesn't do it on its own. Uh, some other cards that you might want to consider are Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion. There's a lot of stuff happening in the graveyard, a lot of cards summoning from the graveyard. This blankets the Princess effect and it blankets the uh, Kieran effect. So it is good, it has its uses. Um, it also can stop the Albion effect if you're getting gimmick puppeted by Branded. Uh, it's not a bad card, uh, especially if there's a lot of Labyrinth around, you might want to play Ghost Spell. It's something to consider. Although, what I prefer, I mean, who cares what I prefer, but I think that uh, DD Crow might actually be the better uh, graveyard negation just because DD Crow. Uh, it, you, it's a little bit more proactive. You can DD Crow something initially uh, rather than having to wait for that activation and Ghost Spell. It can be chain blocked or something like that. Uh, but if you just start your turn by DD Crow send, you know, Banish Princess or Banish Garunix, you're in a good spot. And also, if you have people that are really into the uh, uh, transaction rollback combo where you uh, send rollback and the Mayakashi trap. Uh, once they use Rollback's effect, you can DD Crow the Mayakashi Trap, uh, and it will resolve without effect, which is very useful because that card is otherwise a turn skip. So basically, uh, DD Crow can <laughs> turn an FTK into your opponent, uh, getting rid of half their life for no reason at all. So if you're not going to go for a hand trap approach, the other option is to go for a board breaker approach. And so the scary thing about this approach, of course, is that you're effectively saying, I'm going to let my opponent go full combo, and then I'm going to break their board. Uh, and use their cards uh, in my own deck, which actually makes a lot of sense in a tier zero meta because uh, you're playing a lot of the same cards. A princess on your opponent's field is just as useful uh, as a princess on your field. So if they've already summoned it for you, why not take it? You can take their ash, you can take their oak, you can do all sorts of different things uh, to generate advantage using your opponent's cards. Um, so if you're going to go with that approach, uh, you're probably going to play three Cosmic Cyclone. Um, Cosmic Cycloning the uh, Fire King Field Spell will blow up their board and trigger all of their effects, which is a great card to pair with Triple Tactics Talent uh, if you play both of these cards, because you can wait until the main phase, banish the Field Spell. They don't normally put up any negates, so all these board breakers are going to be very useful. Then they're going to trigger a bunch of effects in the main phase. Uh, so a play that you might see often is Cosmic Cyclone, will banish uh, the field spell, blow up the board, and then you get to take their Arvada and start comboing with a monster negate on your uh, side of the field if you're playing against the Fire King variant. So that's that's something to consider. Uh, another card that you might uh, play if you play the extra deck space for it is Super Poly. Uh, Super Poly, just about every end board can be Super Polyed in some way uh, or another. I would say, I, I haven't tested it myself, but I would bet that if you play Super Poly, you're going to struggle to also play Jet Synchron uh, with the full Synchro package because the extra deck is going to start to get a little bit tight with uh, two or three Super Poly targets and two or three Synchro monsters. Uh, you're running out of a lot of utility there. But Super Poly, you can't respond to it. It is a great board breaker and can be used in the first action on your turn. Enemy controller is also really great because, like I said earlier, the fact that your opponent's cards can also generate advantage for you because you're playing the same cards, uh, enemy controller is incredibly useful uh, in that respect. Taking, you know, let them do the flame bridge combo and then take it, dodge a negate or an imperm or a veiler or something, and then also take your opponent's cards uh, is 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 really good. Especially if you're going first and you set a, an enemy controller, tribute your Flamberge Dragon to take a monster on their field uh, that they can't interact with uh, is, is going to generate a lot of advantage for you. And again, because this deck does have synergy with sending cards to the graveyard, you might also consider something like Forbidden Droplet. Uh, Forbidden Droplet, you can send your Flamberge Dragon again to generate advantage, or you're going to have extra cards on the field uh, from the field, the, the field spell and placing things in the spell and trap zone. So it might, it might be worth running as well.
probably some side deck options you can consider for board breakers is actually Magical Spring. Uh, if you're playing against pure Snake Eye, uh, they're going to end their turn with at least two uh, continuous spells on the field. So you're going to get to draw two uh, and then discard one because you control Magical Spring. And in a similar vein, it's basically like a Phantasme that you can activate without triggering talents on your opponent's turn um, or without generating a body for them to deal with. So these two cards, if you're playing a board breaker approach, uh, might be good to side in going second because it means that uh, you're going to have a higher likelihood of drawing into the board breakers that you absolutely need to break the Fire King board. Um, and another uh, board breaker that you might consider siding against the Fire King Snake Eye build specifically is Soul Release. Uh, Soul Release is not amazing against pure Snake Eye though. Uh, the only card in the graveyard that you're really worried about uh, is your princess and your uh, the level one fire monsters that are in there for Flamberge to get back. But the problem with that is, again, uh, because the pure Snake Eye uh, board can put up negates, uh, something like Soul Release is not nearly as scary as it is in the Fire King build, where if you banish their Garunix, uh, their Flamberge, their princess, that's kind of that kind of lights out for that deck. I mean, that there's they're they're going to be relying on. Uh, their main deck because there's not a great way to get those cards back. So as we've seen, there's a ton of different combo lines and a ton of different options you have in the extra deck uh, and even the main deck to, to play pure Snake Eye. And that's one of the reasons why it's so powerful right now. It can do just about anything in the game and that's before you add other fire engines into this deck. So I figured the last thing that I would leave you with is uh, my deck list, what, the way that I like to build uh, and play the deck with considering all of these options that we've already gone through, and you can compare it to other regional and YCS topping lists. I'm actually very curious to see how, as the format develops, playing pure uh, changes. Do people start to cut Jet Synchron and play a purely Link-based build? Is there some other tech card that is still undiscovered that will help break and also enhance the Snake Eye cards? Is it going to be more optimal to play certain ratios of the different main deck monsters? And will people gravitate towards playing mostly hand traps or playing mostly board breakers? Uh, it's a little bit too early in the format to tell. We'll see as we go along what people end up doing. Hopefully the format will develop in an interesting way uh, before inevitably every single card in this deck gets banned because it is insanely powerful. But here's my deck list. So for my build of pure snake eyes, it's not complicated. It's a pretty cookie cutter, I won't lie, but this is what I've been playing, which has been three snake eye ash, two snake eyes poplar, one birch, one oak, and two Flamberge Dragon. This is the monster lineup for the Snake Eyes cards. And also as part of this engine, I consider the Divine Temple of the Snake Eye. This is the basic uh, Snake Eye engine itself. And then we also, of course, have to play the three Bonfire to help our consistency and our extension. That card is just too good right now with Poplar and Ash in the format. Uh, for the Diabellstar engine, I play three Wanted, three Diabellstar, uh, and one original Sinful Spoils Snake Eye. This deck list right now is at 41 cards, and I've also played it at 42 by adding in a second original Sinful Spoils Snake Eye. Uh, I think, give or take, that's fine. I think if you play 41, 42, um, we've seen a couple of pure lists uh, going above 40. Uh, and mostly, uh, if you're going above 40, you should be adding in a little bit more engine to help your consistency if you're struggling with consistency in the deck. Because again, that that you're playing so much non-engine, you do run the risk of opening a couple of unplayable hands. Your opponent's probably not doing anything either. Uh, but again, if you're playing 42 cards or 41, you could consider adding in uh, another original Sinful Spoils Snake Eye. But those are the Diabell Star cards. I do play the Synchro stuff. I think it is just too good. And Jet Synchron is also a card on its own that generates a lot of advantage because it can summon itself back, which helps a lot in the grind game. Uh, I play one for one, and I do play Monster Reborn. Monster Reborn is the 41st card. And you could cut it, but again, I, as I talked about earlier in the video, it's utility as both a going first combo extender and a going second board breaker because you can special summon a, a useful princess or Garunix in the mirror is just too good to pass up. For the hand traps, <laughs> there's 15 of them, and they are three ash. Three Droll. I would maybe cut this and swap it out for something else if people start to get really, really good at playing around Droll. It's very easy to play around Droll in these decks, but uh, right now, early in the format, Droll is still good enough to main, I think. Uh, three Nibiru the Primal Being. 
uh, talked about earlier, paired with any other hand trap, you're going to end someone's turn. Three effect Veiler, three Imperm, and then for the last three cards of the deck, three Triple Tactics Talent. I think people are going to be flinging hand traps left and right, and so I would rather my defensive be that I get to rip a card out of their hand if they do that. For the extra deck, we have Link Karibo, uh, Ambla Whale, Mascarena, Princess, and SP. These are the cards that I was saying earlier in the video are mandatory to me. These are the five, and the only five, uh, that truly must be in your Snake Eye deck, because these are the five cards that you're going to combo with every single game. Uh, then on top of that, we have the Synchro Package. I am still on Borrowload Savage Dragon, because even though it's a little bit win more, uh, who doesn't love playing Negates? Uh, Baron de Fleur and Formula Synchron. Uh, those are the two ones that you really should play if you're on Jet Synchron. Savage is maybe optional, but I still like it. Uh, Selene, this is a combo extender. There are some hands that you can use Selene if you open wanted uh, to link up into Appaloosa and end your turn with that on the field instead. Uh, but Selene is also useful uh, in the grind game for getting Diabelle Star back. I do play the Zelantis and Raging Phoenix OTK. It's insanely good. And then I do play the two Charmers and Nightmare Phoenix. Now you might notice there's no Sunlight Wolf in my extra deck. Uh, I don't think Sunlight Wolf is necessary if you are not playing Heat Soul. I mean, it does have a lot of utility in the fact that you can get your engine back, but in the metagame right now, Sunlight Wolf is mostly used to get a Kirin back to your hand in the Fire King version. We don't have a card like Kirin that we want to activate on our opponent's turn. That card is just going to go into the grave for Jet Synchron's effect. And I don't find that uh, the, the combo with Jet Synchron already generates so much advantage in the gates that I don't think uh, having one extra card in your hand at the end of that, if it's successful, is that useful. Uh, I would rather have the utility of a Nightmare Phoenix in there or something else uh, to play instead of Sunlight Wolf. That could be a mistake. I don't know. But that's the way that I've been playing it right now, and it seems to be okay. I've seen a couple of other lists that have cut Sunlight Wolf in pure Snake Eyes, so I, I uh, am continuing with that. Now for the side deck, uh, I play three cross out in the side. I don't, you know, I don't think you need to main this card, especially if you don't know what everyone's going to be on. My thought with tier zero formats is that if you're playing at locals and you're not going to all the regional or YCS events, people aren't necessarily going to be playing the, the hardest meta decks and people will do uh, all sorts of other crazy stuff. So I'd rather keep a card like Cross Out uh, for when I'm guaranteed to go first because I have no idea what my opponent is going to be on. If this were a regional or a YCS, maybe I would find the space to cut two talents and main deck Cross Out instead. But for my locals and the way I've been playing the deck, uh, I just leave the Cross Out in the side. Uh, speaking of going first, I do side three anti-spell fragrance. Yeah, floodgates are bad, they need to ban this card, but it is too good to pass up right now. I also side three cosmic cyclone. This is mostly for voiceless voice and birds. I think that Fluon Dries and voiceless voice kind of crumble to this card a little bit, more so than Fire King does, although I do occasionally side it in going first as well against Fire Kings. Another note is that because anti-spell and summon limit are so popular right now, just about everybody is playing Cosmic in their uh, side deck. So it's sometimes a good idea to throw one Cosmic into your main deck going first with Cross Out so that you can protect your field spell another way. Uh, and again, Cross Out is not bad going first. You can set it and still interact with your opponent's field, whether they're playing Fire King or Voices Voice or anything else. So it's not a bad card. I also play uh, Kurikara in the side deck. I was maining this for a while. I think it works perfectly fine in the main deck, but for space and trying to get the deck closer and closer and closer to 40 cards, uh, I put it into the side. I also side the um, Sinful Spoils Subversion. You don't need to play this card, but having a searchable board breaker is really nice, especially a one-for-one -one trade. And I also side the Called By right now. Now, if I were going to, again, a regional or YCS, I probably would swap this Called By out for uh, an Agave Dragon. Uh, however, I am not going to any of those events right now, but you do need a way to win in time. So I would maybe consider uh, changing out those two cards. And I also would, if I were going to a regional or YCS anytime soon, I would probably play uh, Spooky Dogwood in the side deck, but because in my locals, I don't really try to go to time <laughs> that often. Instead, I am playing three Book of Eclipse in the side deck. Uh, and this is for the Fluon de Riz, uh, and Voiceless Voice matchups. I find that having a non-targeting effect that can just set their whole board so that you don't have to deal with whatever floodgates 
uh, or nonsense uh, that is on the board and just being able to put it down. In voiceless voice, it never works because they negate it, but hey, you've baited the negate, so that's uh, that's what it's supposed to do. Flu on you know, when you normal summon something, you can let them do their entire combo and then you can book of Eclipse all the M-pens that they have set or whatever. Uh, it's not a big deal. Maybe it'll bait the Apex Avion. Uh, so Book of Eclipse is a nice card right now, I think. I mean, it, it is a shame that it can be Ash Blossom, but uh, whatever, say la vie. Sometimes that is just going to happen. So I hope you enjoyed this breakdown of the Pure Snake Eye deck. Uh, there is, a, again, there's so much that this deck can do. The combo lines seem to be endless. I find a new way to play around some hand trap every single time I play the deck. Um, these are, again, all the combos that we did were only one or two card combos, but when you have an entire hand to play with, uh, the deck changes dramatically. I mean, there's so much that this deck can do. It really is incredibly fun to play. I know no one likes a tier zero format, but the mirror matches are just so much fun. I, in my locals last Friday, uh, I had a game one that went 44 minutes. It was absolutely insane, uh, and it was a blast the entire time. I do really like this deck, and I'm interested to see as the metagame develops and as more YCSs go on, if people uh, prefer the pure build over the Fire King build and any other build uh, that uses the Snake Eye cards, because they are amazing. Anyway, if you haven't already, give this video a like if you want to see more content like this, and subscribe to the Dual Cypher. Uh, we are having a great time in Kentucky, in Louisville, playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, and making content for you all at uh, Through the Decades. So uh, give us a like, give us a subscribe, follow us on all the other social media accounts that we are, and stay tuned for the next video. Like a spider on your shoulder makes your skin crawl! Yeah!